So here, we're ultimately looking for the slope of our tangent line. And your problem says that you can really look at the slope of your secant line, which is your average rate of change. And then it says we can go ahead and take our limit of that. So in other words, we're looking at our instantaneous rate of change right here, which is our limit as h approaches 0. We have this part right here, which, once again, is still going to be this part. And that's going to be the same on all of these. Now, what we get when we have that part, we'll put here. And then we'll put the other part right there. So when we're looking at this, it says what goes afterwards is f of x. Well, that's our original function. Now, what goes before our subtraction sign says go and put in x plus h into your original function. So, for the most part, all we have to do is simplify this. You'll notice if you did go ahead and plug in 0 right now, you would end up getting 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form. So, we can go ahead and work out the top. Remember, x plus h all squared would be x plus h times x plus h, and you'd have to FOIL that, and then distribute through your 2. You collect your like terms, your 2x squareds would drop, leaving you with this. You'll notice you could take an h out of the top, and it would cancel with your h on the bottom. Now, we can go ahead and take h being 0 and plug it in. That causes your h to go to 0, leaving you only with that 4x. Your i rock is your slope predictor function. And our slope predictor function is 4 times your input. We are looking for our slope at x being 2. Well, all we'd have to do is take 2 and plug it in for x. And so when we do that, we would get 8. And if you're looking for the equation of your tangent line, your slope would be 8, and your point would be 2, 8. And you might wonder, how, how do I figure out the y value of my point? Well, all you have to do is take 2 and plug it into your original function to find the y value. And so if you're looking for the equation of your tangent line, you use your derivative, your i rock, to find your slope predictor function, plug in your value of x to find your slope, and then you could find your tangent line. We want to go ahead and find the slope of our tangent line at all these functions when x is 2. So once again, what goes afterwards is your original function. And we're looking at what happens when we plug in 2. So we go 3 to the second power. Well, then we're looking at what happens when we plug in 2 for this part. It would be 2 plus h is what we're plugging into our function. So you plug in 2 plus h for your input. So you get 3 raised to the 2 plus h. Well, over here on the left, we could use algebra and get our terms to drop out that were causing us to give issues in the bottom of our h being 0. Over here on the right, there is no way for us to be able to get this h out of the bottom. Could we go ahead and factor a 3 squared out of the top? Yes, but it's still not going to help us get h out of the bottom. So sometimes we don't have the algebraic skills at this point to be able to simplify this down. So now we're going to go ahead and use our calculator to help us out. Well, know that your calculator only likes to deal with x. So we're going to take this expression right here and plug it into our y equals, but we're going to use x on our calculator because your calculator doesn't handle h. So you want to plug that into your y equals. If you have a newer calculator, you can enter it as a fraction. If you don't have a newer calculator, you'd have to put the whole top in parentheses. Then we're going to go ahead and look at our table. And we want to try values that are close to 0. So go second window, which is your table set. Go down and change your independent variable to not auto, but ask. Now look at your table. So go second graph. And now we're going to start plugging in numbers that are close to 0. If I plug in 0 itself, you see that I get an error. So if I try 0 0.01, you can see I get 
9.942. But we're supposed to plug in stuff really close to zero, so I could keep trying stuff that's closer and closer to zero. And you can see if I try something with a point and five zeros, because this is scientific notation, and then a one, I would get this highlighted black number, which is more detailed down here in red. That's a good approximation. If you end up putting in too many zeros, point zero 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 zero, your calculator is going to give you a rounding error, and it'll give you something that's totally different than any of these numbers. So, if we want to estimate our slope at x being two, we would say it is this here. And then, if you wanted to find the equation of your tangent line, you'd have to have a point, which would be two comma nine, and that's what you get when you plug two into your original function. Down below here, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. We're going to be using our IROC formula up here. And so we would plug in 2 for our x, get 2 plus h that we plug in, minus log of 2. Or over here, when we're doing this one, we would plug in 2 and we get 2 plus h after our cosine, minus 2. In both of these cases, just like the last problem, we don't have the algebra skills to be able to get this out of the bottom, get the h out of the bottom. So we plug each one of these expressions into our y equals. And we already have our table set up for table set. So if you just go ahead and set your table or look at your table again, it's going to display this because it changes all these values based on your new input. And so we would get our slope to be approximately this right here with your original point being this. The main thing you have to be aware of when you're doing this one over here is the mode of your calculator. You don't see any degree signs, so you know you have to be in radians. So make sure you hit mode and make sure you're in radians. You'd still put this into your y equals, and then after you make sure you're in radians, you go ahead and plug it into your y equals and you end up getting your slope at x being 2 to be approximately this, and that's what shows up here on your calculator.